Hello, and thank you very much for joining me for a new series that looks at one of life's most important rituals, how we say goodbye to our loved ones. In today's multicultural Australia, how have funeral rites changed to adapt to the times? In this five-part series, a generous cross-section of our community allowed us in to see how they pay tribute to their dead and what it means to the living. Death, the journey we all eventually take. I think when your number's up, your number's up. How we'll carry our loved ones on their final journey. How we'll honour them in death. How we'll grieve. The rites and rituals performed today in Australia. Let's go get them girls. Whether we inter, bury or burn our dear departed, and where we think they'll go, is determined by our culture, values and beliefs. In the mighty name of Jesus. In this series, we go behind the scenes of Hindu, Catholic, Muslim, Buddhist, Protestant, and secular funerals. Whether huge or humble, on the right shoulder, we cross over into privileged territory to stand beside closest kin and share their intimate moments. His last words were, I love you, Mum. To get a picture of death as it's done in 21st century Australia. In Sydney's western suburb of Mount Druitt, community funeral director Osman Iqbal is preparing for a highly unusual Muslim burial. The person that we're doing the funeral for today passed away um, two months ago on Christmas Island. Um, he arrived on a boat and five, year, five hours later he passed away. He had a heart attack. Due to the sensitive nature of the case, Compass is unable to name the deceased asylum seeker. A Muslim funeral is meant to be done within 24 hours. So this being like over two months, the person's passed away, it's very like shameful or very you know, distressful for the family and for the community. Okay, now we're going to go to the mortuary. It's for cases like these, Osman formed a not-for-profit Muslim funeral cooperative two years ago. My sister and her first son, my nephew, passed away. The kid was three years old, so we called up a few Muslim funeral directors and they were all very uncooperative. It was all about money. They don't do anything until you've paid them up front. Now, 130 budget funerals and 4,000 members later, Osman estimates they've saved the Muslim community a quarter of a million dollars. Muslims are not buried in coffins. Allah, the Almighty, we seek your forgiveness. Instead, the body is ritually washed and dressed in a white shroud known as a coffin. You guys want to come inside? So what they're doing is tying up. Today's ritual is under the supervision of Imam Thanvi. We have to put three knots and uh, when we let the uh, body in the grave and we have to untie them. So that's, that's the one of the ritual. To maintain the body's purity, anointing oil is sprinkled on the shroud. Small drops here and there. We use some on the, on the naked face when, when we finish the wash. And that is the, the last, uh, you know. So now it's, it's ready to, to go. All right. Okay. Bodies are transported to the mosque and graveyard in reusable stainless steel lined coffins. I always felt I want to do something better for the community. So this gives me a chance 
Makes me feel happy that I'm doing something for another family. To ensure the body stays in a pure state, it's covered with a holy rug, embossed with images of the Kaaba in Mecca, the shrine of the Prophet Muhammad, and verses from the last chapter of the Quran. We are actually putting the mercy on the body by putting all these verses on the top. And now it's ready to go, and then now we do some little prayer with the family, and then uh, we're ready to move. Every funeral is a big day because it's, it's more of like a sad day that another person's passed away in the, in the community. And, you know, we need to look after each other. Thank you. Thank you, brothers. It's midday prayer time. Osman and his volunteers have arrived at the Mount Druitt Mosque in Western Sydney. One, 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 one second, one, one, one second, wait, wait. Um, have your shoes ready off to go in. Because Muslims are usually buried within 24 hours, they don't have a specific funeral service. Instead, a special funeral prayer is said after the regular mosque service. Our Muslim funerals are very simple and compared to other funerals there's not really a lot of money involved, there's not a lot of rituals involved. The coffins placed at the back of the mosque. There can be any number of coffins depending on how many deaths have occurred. Today there is just one. It will stay until we finish the main prayer as the Imam is doing his uh, it's a Friday prayer. That's why you see a lot of people here today. So this person is, you know, very lucky that so many people will be taking part in, in his um, funeral prayer. You know what I mean? Those present take part in blessing the deceased and help carry the coffin. It is an honour to participate in the funeral. It's not by invitation. We encourage the community to come as many as they can and it will be rewarded. They pray for you that you'll be forgiven. If you have 40 or more people, you have a better chance of being forgiven. So the more people you have, basically just gives you more chances to get into heaven, really. There are no eulogies, no sermons. The dead man's name is not mentioned. There's a period of silence and the simple janaza funeral prayer. Downstairs is only for men. Upstairs, female family members gather with other women in the balcony area. In every single mosque around the world, women have their own section and men have their own section. So that's why they're separated. But in a funeral, the women are involved as much as they're allowed by um, the religion. Women observe the funeral through gaps in the opaque screens. They also pray, console and support each other. Separate from the coffin and the men. The service is now over. It's a good thing if you give a shoulder to somebody else's casket. Today you give this person a shoulder, tomorrow somebody else will give you a shoulder. So they're trying to get involved and make sure that when they pass away, there's that many people at their funeral and they get a shoulder as well. Islam is about simplicity and you know compassion and all these things. So it really shows you that in the funeral. Wash 
pray. Very simple. How simple can a funeral be? At Mount Druitt, Osman's volunteers, led by Imam Thanvi, have brought the asylum seeker's body to a nearby cemetery. Islamic law stipulates Muslims must be buried, not cremated. My full name is Wasim Rafay, but everybody knows me here as Waza the digger, the grave digger. It's preferable to have a Muslim here digging it because you have to be in uh, wudu, which is purity, uh, where you're bur burying the dead and in a state of cleansiness. At the cemetery, like the mosque, women grieve separately from the men. They have been told to stay back a little bit because it's very emotional. That's the way it's been set out in the religion and that's just the way it is. No shoes, no shoes. Um, one more person. What's being done is two people or three people go inside the grave and they lower the body down into the grave. Take it back a bit. Yeah. So they actually feel closer to their own family member. One person lift from there, yeah? Yes. And pass over to the, to, to the brothers, pass over to the brothers. Walk over and give it to the brothers. Just like that. All the way down? All the way down? All the way down? Then once they're inside the grave, they put them on the right shoulder facing Mecca. Move to the shoulder, okay? On the right shoulder, yeah? On that side. And then they untie all the knots. There's usually um, four or five knots, and you cover it with timber planks so the dirt doesn't go inside or on top of the um, body. That's it, perfect. Each man throws three handfuls of soil into the grave. The Quran says this is done as a sign of respect, symbolising that humans come from the earth and will one day return. There is heaven and hell for Muslims, and you know that's why we have religion. Heaven is obviously beautiful, and hell is not. So, I'm sure a lot of other religions believe the same thing. In Islam, grave markers are simple. Lavish monuments are discouraged. Sorrow is dignified. Wailing or loud crying is not permitted. Grief is not necessarily bound to the burial. When you're grieving, do you really need the dead person there? Like he can't see you or he can't He's not going to get up and tell you, hey, stop grieving. No, it doesn't make sense. It's like, let's put him out of his misery, bury him, okay, and then we are still here. We can actually grieve for as long as you want, but Islamically, it's three days you're meant to grieve and then move on with your life. I like to say thank you to all the brothers who came for this brother. I mean, thank you. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. He's a refugee and he you know, passed away in the detention centre. So there's no one out here that knows him. This community still got together and you know, got his funeral done. It was another one of those days where everything went pretty smooth. So we'll get to go home now. <laughs> Next week on Faith and Funerals, a motorcycle send-off for a Vietnam vet. He'd be in the pub in heaven. <laughs> Plus a traditional Chinese funeral, chanting away to a better place. Every Buddhist would like to go to the Pure Land when they die. <laughs> <laughs>